Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to No Man's Sky. Now after my video yesterday highlighting the problems with No Man's Sky Beyond Update for VR on PC, respected website Upload VR confirmed the widespread performance issues in an article and also received a response from Hello Games' Sean Murray. Meanwhile, Hello Games have released an update for the PC which fixes many of the crashing issues, however it doesn't address the VR performance problems. Now, in this video, I want to take a look at what is going on, specifically why some people are experiencing unplayable VR issues, whilst other people seem to be having a flawless experience. Before we get into that though, let's take a look at some of the key points from the Upload VR article. The article is also linked in the video description, and I highly recommend that you go and take a look. Naturally, hardware is the first thing that comes to mind whenever a PC game, especially a VR one, has performance issues. Now keep in mind that Oculus recommended spec for VR is a GTX 1060 or equivalent, whilst the minimum spec is a GTX 1050 Ti. Meanwhile, the Valve Index has slightly higher recommended specs with a GTX 1070 being recommended. Now to see how No Man's Sky Beyond was performing on PC in VR, Upload VR tested the update on a number of different PC builds, including an RTX 2070, an RTX 2080, and a GTX 980 Ti. All cards suffered from performance issues in Beyond, regardless of how powerful they are. Before we get into those details though, it's very important to understand that in VR you need 80 frames per second on some of the headsets, otherwise you need 90 frames per second. If you don't achieve this target, then VR is going to look very jerky and in some people it's going to introduce motion sickness. Now there are people out there who are quite happy to play VR at 40 frames per second, but just as equally there are people out there who are quite happy to play games in 15 frames per second on a monitor and it's the same type of experience to be perfectly honest. So Upload VR found that the RTX 2070 could only maintain 80 frames per second with all settings at their lowest, all graphical settings that is. The RTX 2080 with a Valve Index had to have a substantial resolution drop to reach 80 frames per second. Meanwhile, the GTX 980 Ti had issues even with all the settings at their lowest. Upload VR are not alone with this experience. I'm looking through some of the comments in my previous video on Beyond. In addition to the dozens of Reddit threads and forum posts out there, it's clear to see that many people are having performance issues in VR on the PC regardless of just how powerful their PC actually is. People with RTX 2080s and current generation CPUs are experiencing the same troubles as people with older generation technology. And this issue then is very clearly not about having the so-called underpowered hardware. It also seems it's not necessarily related to having outdated drivers as even people with the latest drivers are having some trouble as well. Although that said, there may be some API or driver issues that need addressing by NVIDIA and AMD or Hello Games. Personally though, I feel the issue is directly related to No Man's Sky. Again, do go take a look at the Upload VR article for more information on the specifics here. It's well worth a read and you can see it linked below. Hello Games also responded and that can be read there on the article as well. So I won't go into full detail here on the Hello Games response. But essentially, Sean Murray broke down the situation into three categories, and I will quote just one paragraph for him, or from him rather. We are tracking a number of performance-related issues. They fall into three potential categories. Some are related to the bugs, which we will resolve. Some are related to players' hardware setup and settings, which in many cases could be resolved through support or improved defaults. And others are related to unexpected scenarios in the game, which will be further optimised. So two of those categories are something that Hello Games will need to sort out, whereas the middle one is something that players may be able to address themselves. Now whilst there's undoubtedly something broken with the implementation of PC VR in Beyond, it clearly isn't affecting everyone. Meanwhile, other players have managed to improve the situation a little at least by changing certain settings. One Reddit user posted this image or of the recommended graphical settings. And these are certainly worth trying. Whilst they didn't help performance on my PC, I've heard that they have helped at least a little for some other players. The full Reddit thread for this image is linked in the video description as well. Now there's also another potential issue here which might explain why some users are having a trouble while others are not seeing the issues. 
It's also worth pointing out as, as an aside here that the majority of the performance issues, at least for me, are when flying over the surface of planets. In space and when walking around, it's not quite as apparent, although the issues are certainly still there. So this brings us on to that rather special VR technology known as a synchronous time warp or reprojection or space warp. Now I don't want to get into technical details on this tech as it's way beyond the scope of this video. And I'm also neither a hardware nor a software engineer. For detailed explanations though, check out the article links below. Uh, it will certainly give you everything that you need to know. However, in short, a synchronous space warp and reprojection are techniques used to trick the VR user into thinking that frame rate users are actually higher than they really are. It does this during moments that frame rates of the game drop below the refresh rate of the headset. For example, the Oculus Rift S has a refresh rate of 80Hz, meaning that it needs the game to run at 80fps minimum in order to avoid graphical lag and potential motion sickness. If the frame rate drops below 80fps, then the reprojection technology will kick in. Required frame rates will vary depending on the headset brand. Now it's important to understand here that at least technically, in order for a game to be considered to actually support VR, then that game needs to hit the target frame rate. If a game for example only hits 40 frames per second, then technically it's not fully supporting VR. And in fact on the PSVR, Sony will not certify games that don't reach these targets. Now basically the way reprojection works is that the headset will use an already rendered frame rather than use a new frame which doesn't exist due to the performance lag. The result is that with head tracking it maintains a consistent 80fps, 90fps or whatever the target of the headset in use actually is, whilst the game itself might actually drop as low as 40 frames per second or maybe even less. Now one of the best ways to visualise this is to imagine that you're on a train. Now that train constantly moves at the same speed, you can also turn your head at a constant rate. Outside the windows, the game world is being rendered and this is the game that you're actually seeing. Sometimes during poor performance, the outside game world starts juddering. However, the train, that is to say your head rotation movement, maintains the same performance by using the reprojection technique, therefore avoiding headset lag and potential motion sickness. What this means is that whilst the game world will become very juddery, your head tracking will not. It's a technological trick and a very, very good one. It means that it's more than possible for a game to drop to very bad performance without the user actually noticing. And that is the entire point of the technology. This likely explains why some people feel that their VR experience in Beyond is not suffering from performance issues. Although that's not to say that there's not people out there who have perfect performance because quite clearly there still is. But anyway, it's a theory that is backed up by some data from Upload VR. Users reporting flawless performance have sent in-game analysis graphs to Upload uh, to Upload VR, and the data has shown that reprojection is actually kicking in, and that the game's performance has suffered, even though the user feels that it's actually running perfectly. Essentially, then the technology is doing its job. It's tricking the user into feeling that the game is running at a high frame rate, thus helping to avoid a disassociation and motion sickness. Now there's a Reddit post linked below, again, that goes into more detail on this, do check it out. So the bottom line is that the PC VR performance issues are a very, very real thing, and they appear to be affecting a significant number of players. Hello Games are aware of this, and will be getting a fix out at some point, although there's no information on exactly when that will happen. Meanwhile, I do want to reiterate that I personally love the implementation of VR in No Man's Sky. I've been using it on PSVR and thoroughly enjoying it. I'd go as far as to say that it's one of the best VR experiences and best VR games available. I understand that some people are not enjoying the control setup, especially for ship flight, but personally I really do like it, but I can understand why it's an issue for some. Now that's not to say that the PlayStation doesn't also have its issues, it does have some, especially I hear that some people feel that the uh, VR is a little bit too blurry on the PlayStation. Personally, again, I feel that's actually still okay, it's not too much of an issue. Uh, but then we've got to factor in that the uh, PlayStation isn't exactly a powerful PC beast either. Now having dual control setups would no doubt help with the controller issues that some people are experiencing, and this would allow players to switch between a motion controller and a gamepad or a HOTUS in real time. Maybe that's something for the future. 
Now, I will be back very soon with some more videos on No Man's Sky. Overall, I've got to say, I think it is absolutely fantastic update. Hello Games are clearly very passionate about this game, and they've brought it a long, long way over the past few years. So I've got to say, it's very nice to see it in the current position. Looking forward to playing more of this. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.